Hey everyone, in this video we're asking the question, what's the best focal length for portraiture? 85 millimeters, 105 or 135? So many of you would have heard that this sort of range of focal lengths is considered ideal for portraiture. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is the optical quality of the lenses in that range and of course what you can do in terms of field of view compression and your out of focus areas. But another is that in that range about 85 and up you're getting free of the distortion of wide angle lenses and you're not quite getting into the pin cushion type effect of distortion that you often get at much longer telephoto lenses. Let's take a look around the three we're playing with today. So the first of the lenses we're using today is the Nikon 85mm 1.4G. I'm just introducing them here. The actual lenses we're specifically using isn't too important. We're not looking about the optical quality of these three specific lenses, just how the focal lengths work. Next up is the 105 DC F2 from Nikon. This is the old D series lens. And I've done a video on this before, but this is the unique defocus control style lens. And finally, the 135 is the APO Sonar from Carl Zeiss. Okay, so for me, there's more to it than just the optical performance of the lens and the build and how it is to actually use. There's the practicality of using it in terms of, you know, how far you need to be away from your model and stuff. So here in the studio, we're limited in space. I've never run out of space in the studio, but I brought along lovely Jade to take some different test shots here. And we'll run through each of the lenses and just see how they are to use in this kind of a cramped environment. So starting out with the 85, Let's see, the frame I can get here is top of head to just where the bottom of your hands are. So right around the joint of the denim to the leather. Single light over here, so just look up to it. Beautiful, get down low to get rid of any distortion. Okay, lovely. So here at 85, no problem. And this is a nice working distance that I'd be able to give direction and feedback to her. Now let's throw on the 105 and step back. Okay, so 85 to 105, it's not a huge difference in focal length, about 25%. So I've just moved back about a meter here. Same shot. And rather than you just standing there still, uh, turn your chin towards the light, but then give me a duck face. I know you love a duck face, Sophie. Okay, now give me a goat face. Goat face. Yeah, that's it. And let's see, maybe a sheep face. And let's go for, lastly, a d There we go. That is not Okay, so now with the 135, that's over 50% longer than the 85 mil. So to get the same frame, oh, need to go back a little bit more again. This one's also manual focus, so let's just get her in. Okay, now um, do the robot. Okay, movement, I want movement, do the robot. Oh, there you go. <laughs> running man? A Little bit of running man, maybe. Okay, so for that crop in this space, they're all working. Here, it's starting to get a little bit of feeling like I'm yelling at her. I certainly wouldn't want to be shooting with a 200 mil in studio. But if I were trying to get a full body shot, we already have the background right at the far wall there. If I go right to this wall, I actually can't get it. Now, this will be an easy pose for you. Just show me all your attitude. Look straight down camera, chin down a little. More attitude. You got more than that usually. When you walk in here, you got more than that. Okay, so we can only get, it's blowing out there, so the light's not actually catching her feet anyway, but to halfway down her calves. So we can't get full length shots in this space. That's a practical consideration you need to take into account. Here, we're not seeing the compression and the depth of field because of the black background. So let's head outside. To test these three shots in an outdoor location, we ran a series of different shots in this park. Now here's a shot taken at F8. So you can see what's in the background and the kind of distractions there are. There's a couple of things that we're gonna look at in these kind of shots. First of all, let's look at some results with the 85. This is kind of a half body shot and then a close up on the head and shoulders. Next up here we are with the 105 and then the close up. And then let's have a look at the 135. And 
the close-up. Now, there's a few different things you want to be keeping in mind here. First of all, what's it doing in terms of compression to the background and what's it doing in terms of how the face is actually represented, the shape of your subject. 85, there's the 105, and then with the 135. Now, looking specifically at these lenses, take a look at the 105 a cropping on her shirt. Wicked chromatic aberration. Haven't seen results like that other than maybe the Canon 85 1.2 and the Leica Noctilux, both shocking for their chromatic aberration. And the 135 just doesn't have it at all and the 85 only has a small amount. Taking a look again at the studio shots, even though we can't see the depth of field or the compression, it still represents her body in a different shape because of the different distortion you're getting. So 85, 105, and 135. Now I'm a big 85 fan, and whilst I have the 105 and enjoy using it, I've always found it quite cool. But the 135, I'm really liking the kind of results that's giving here. So what do you think? Was there an obvious one that stood out to you as being your favorite focal length for portraiture? In my opinion, it's always going to come down to what are you shooting? What kind of a final crop do you want? How much room do you have to shoot? And of course, for me at least, what sort of a relationship do you want to have with your subject? Do you want to be 10 meters away shouting or do you want to be up closer being able to have a conversation with them? Obviously, Something like a 70 to 200 zoom is going to be more flexible, give you a whole bunch of different focal lengths to work with, but it is an f2.8 usually. There's some f4s as well, but this one being a 2.8 only captures half as much light as the 135 or the 105 f2s, or a quarter as much light as the 1.4 85mm. But because the 70 to 200s generally have vibration control built in, that can help counteract the loss of light in terms of its impact on your shutter speed. So let us know, what do you like to shoot with? Is there a focal length that's your go-to and also jump over to mattgranger.com you can check out all the different conversations and series that are going on there sign up to the mailing list and leave me any questions or comments you may have thanks and i'll see you soon